let's go ahead and take a look at page seven here. So to begin with, we know that we've got a space shuttle astronaut and they are repairing this defective relay. Um, a relay is just a it's an electronics part we'll we'll talk about in the, the circuits unit, at least to some small extent. We won't really even get that much into it, but it's almost like a I think of it as a digital digital switch in a way, or actually even an analog switch that's just being controlled by software generally. So they're they're replacing that some sort of switch. We know the mass of the satellite. We know that it's traveling pretty fast, right? It's orbiting the Earth. And we're supposing that the astronaut and his MMU, just like a jetpack basically, have a mass of 400 kilograms. They're traveling at 10,000, sorry, sorry 17,010 meters per second toward the satellite. What's the combined velocity? All right, so to begin with, let's take a look at my horrible little diagram over here that I'll draw. Um, we've got our astronaut. And we have the satellite. All right, so there's a couple things we have to think about here. So we know that the astronaut is traveling towards the satellite. So is it that the astronaut is traveling this way towards the satellite and the satellite's coming right at him? Or is it the other way, that the astronaut is traveling towards the satellite and the satellite's actually going the um, same direction as the astronaut? Or... It could be they're going the same direction this way. All right, we got to use a little bit of logic here. So if the astronaut is traveling this direction at 17,000 miles an hour and the satellite is traveling the opposite direction at 17,000 miles an hour, that's a difference of around 34,000 uh, meters per second. Sorry, I said miles hour, hour before, but meters per second. That is a huge impact. Um, so he's going to change speed by 34,000 meters per second. That would kill him. All right, so we know for sure that he's going in the same direction as the satellite because that's only a difference of 10 meters per second. So there's not going to be that much of a force when he makes that impact, um, which is only a difference of 10 meters per second. It's going to be very small force. If they're going in the same direction, though, or I'm sorry, opposite directions, though, that would be a gigantic force in order to get him to stop. All right, so even though it doesn't tell us they're traveling in the same direction, we have to assume that they are. All right, so I know the mass of the satellite. I know the mass of the astronaut. Once that astronaut is on the satellite, we know that those masses combine, so that's what's going on here. And, of course, like we just said, we know the velocities already of the, both the satellite and the astronaut. Go through, do all your, your algebra, and you're left with a V, or velocity, of 17,004 meters per second. So does it make sense that once our astronaut ends up on the satellite, that the satellite actually ends up... Um, speeding up a little bit our astronaut ends up slowing down a little bit well astronauts going fast ends up hitting an object that's going slightly slower so he will slow down and actually cause the other object to be pushed forward so it will speed up so it does in fact make sense that'd be 17,004 if you wanted to again take that 17,004 plug it in up here for v um, if you end up multiplying this by um, by V, we should come out with the same answer as if um, we were to add these two numbers. So both sides equal one another. We know that we're in good shape. All right. So number 16 here, there is a whole lot of extraneous information. So we have the USS Constitution. It's, it's a warship. It's docked in Boston. It's known as whatever. Um, seemingly impenetrable hull. It seems like it can it can take a blast and so nothing's going to hurt it. Houses 56 pieces of artillery. So this actually doesn't matter. It's just saying it, it holds a whole bunch. The 56 extraneous information. It's just meant to see can you can you figure out what, what's relevant and what's not. It's mounted on bearings that allow them to recoil at a speed of 1.3. <clears throat> excuse me. 1.3 meters per second are these 20 carronades. Um, I had to look up what a carronade was the first time I did this packet. 
Um, but it's just like one of those old school pirate cannons. That's what a carronade is. It sort of sits on sits on a base. And it says it's mounted on linear bearings. So in other words, if it's mounted on that, it allows this cannon to recoil, which is kickback. All right, so that's what this recoil speed of 1.3 meters per second is all about. Once this cannon's fired, it's going to kick back at negative 1.3 meters per second as the cannonball ends up firing out the opposite direction. And we want to know what what that is. We're not we're not sure. Okay. So to begin with, we've got to realize that how do we how do we fire a cannonball out of a cannon? Well, to begin with, we've got our cannon, our carronade. I think that's how you pronounce it. We've got the cannonball in there. And then what happens is then it's fired out. So to begin with, whatever the mass of the cannon is and the mass of the cannonball is, it's going to be combined because the cannonball is sitting inside the cannon. Now, in this case, it doesn't really matter because to begin with, our velocity is zero. So even if we got these numbers wrong, we're st we could still have a correct answer to the final, the, um, final number because we're multiplying by zero here. Now, these other numbers, we got to get right on the money. But we know that the mass of the cannon is 1,000. We know that it recoils at a speed of 1.3 meters per second. Recoil meaning it kicks back, so that's why it's negative. And then we know that the cannonball itself is 14.5 kilograms. We don't know the final velocity. But once we go through, there's no like terms to combine at this point, but we can get V isolated by adding 1,300 to both sides since it's negative 1300 and then we're left with 1300 equals 14 and a half V divided by 14 and a half to get rid of it if I do it to one side I got to do it to the other so I'm left with a velocity of 89.66 meters per second I think it does make sense 89.66 meters per second it's pretty fast but this is a cannonball coming out of a cannon so it makes sense that I should have fairly large velocity All right. so if we want to be absolute certain, take that 89.66, plug it back into V, and make sure that both sides equal one another, um, or at least are very, very similar to, to one another. 